morning children yes our lesson is about respiration in organisms isn't it so we have learned about what is respiration what is respiration children it is the process of obtaining energy by oxidation of food in the respiration process what does it takes place the it, uh, it uh, in, in the respiration process it, it takes place in the presence of oxygen respiration process normally takes place in the presence of oxygen in animals isn't it in the presence of oxygen and they are due to the oxygen intake of oxygen what happens breakdown of food takes place breakdown of food breakdown of food takes place that is complete breakdown of food that is glucose formation of food takes place and what is released amount of certain amount of energy is released amount of energy is released during the breakdown of food from larger particles to smaller particles and uh, absorption of the uh, useful food into the body cells and waste is released out through the excretory process so this all takes place through the respiration process that is it takes place a respiration process takes place in the presence of oxygen so in absence of oxygen also it takes place that is called as anaerobic respiration i said respiration is of two types aerobic aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration aerobic respiration takes place in the presence of oxygen anaerobic respiration takes place in absence of oxygen like uh, i told you the examples uh, given about the athletics isn't it and heavy weight lifters uh, they develop the muscle cramps uh, and after fast running so or the heavy exercise what do they use up say they need more and more oxygen to do so so they use the oxygen that is uh, present uh, in their muscles okay so but the supply of oxygen that is produced when it becomes insufficient for them so to require the extra to meet the requirement of the extra energy the cells start respiring in the absence of oxygen that is uh, through the muscles the lactic acid is produced in the place of oxygen generally the during respiration process oxygen is being released that is carbon the glucose plus oxygen in the presence of the uh, energy it gives rise to carbon dioxide and water whereas uh, uh, during the process of when the in the absence of oxygen muscles uh, Uh, the food is in the absence of oxygen it gives rise to alcohol and carbon dioxide with less amount of energy okay children so that is about the respiration process so the respiration process the food molecules are complete in aerobic respiration the food molecules are completely broken down uh, into the carbon dioxide water and releasing the amount of energy so carbon dioxide used for oxygen and released carbon dioxide in the presence of oxygen in absence of oxygen what does it takes place in absence of oxygen food molecules are partially broken down into alcohol here the food is broken down into alcohol in the presence of in sorry in absence of oxygen in absence of oxygen okay alcohol plus carbon dioxide is again released with little amount of energy here also the energy is released so here the food is uh, uh, what happens the glucose that is formed that is food it takes the oxygen in the presence of oxygen that is in the presence of oxygen or the energy that is uh, formed it gives rise to carbon dioxide water and more energy carbon dioxide water and energy is it clear children so that is in the presence of oxygen in the presence of oxygen okay see here children here in the presence of oxygen the food molecules are uh, converted into the carbon dioxide water and gives rise to more energy that is they are broken down the food molecules are completely broken down into carbon dioxide water and gives rise to more energy and here in the absence of oxygen the food molecules are broken down into alcohol carbon dioxide and gives out less energy okay children so energy is also produced in both reactions 
Here, in the presence of oxygen, the organisms that respire in the presence of oxygen are known as aerobes. Is it clear, children? They are known as aerobes. They perform aerobic respiration. They perform aerobic respiration. The organisms which uh, and that is uh, they takes place the anaerobic respiration. They are known as anaerobes. 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 So they perform anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration. Okay, children. So this is about the aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Hope you have understood well. Now we'll move to the breath. That is the how much amount of air is held in our breath. Okay. So children, you know that in about the inhalation and exhalation, that is the, the process of breathing which involves both inhalation and exhalation of gases. Isn't it? That is the air. So expansion of the chest takes place with each breath. That is the number of times we take in and give out air is called the respiration rate. You already know it, isn't it? So in each breath, the expansion of the chest can be observed. How is it so? Take a, that is a measuring tape and measure your chest while inhaling the air in. Okay. So uh, at each breath, so the length of the measuring tape can be found out by measuring across your chest while taking in the air and releasing out of the a, the difference you can find that the while inhalation the size the chest width of the chest increases and uh, during the exhalation the width of the chest decreases isn't it see do you find any difference between the measurements of expansion of the chest yes it, during inhalation and exhalation there is a difference between the expansion of the chest isn't it so uh, how does the width of the, the chest change when we are inhaled or exhaled? The width of the chest, it changes. That is, during exhalation, it, it comes to the normal position. Not decreases, it comes to the normal position. That is, it's, uh, uh, there is a, we can observe the change that while we inhale the air, the air from the outside air enters into the lungs and the lungs expand due to it the chest size increases in size okay so now we'll see about the differences that is the difference between the inhalation and exhalation okay children write down now so during breathing and inhalation and exhalation there is a lot of difference what is it we'll see now see here so there are under four parameters we can describe about the inhalation and exhalation. The first parameter about the movement of air. That is air rich in oxygen flows into the lungs. Air rich in carbon dioxide is forced out of the lungs. When we inhale, air rich in oxygen is moved into our lungs. When we exhale the air out, the air rich in carbon dioxide is forced out of the lung lungs, isn't it? So the next, the movement of ribs. The ribs are present in the chest cavity. We know it, isn't it? So the ribs move upward or outward during the inhalation process. So what happens during inhalation process? What happens to the ribs? They move outward or upward, isn't it? During exhalation, they move inward, isn't it? So they move downward or inward. The movement of the ribs can be under the second parameter. We can write about the ribs okay next the movement of the diaphragm diaphragm is a place where it is in between the chest cavity that is uh, below the, uh, be above the abdomen and below the chest so this is the place of the diaphragm okay children so what happens during inhalation the diaphragm moves inward isn't it it moves inward and during the exhalation it comes out is it clear so outward or upwards it relaxes. So diaphragm contracts or moves downwards in exhalation and during ex sorry in inhalation and during exhalation diaphragm relaxes. Contraction takes place. In the expansion, relaxation takes place. Okay. And moves upwards. And the volume of the chest cavity during inhalation it increases. Volume increases due to the width increases in size due to when you measure, isn't it? So that is the same case you can see that the volume of the chest cavity increases during inhalation and the volume of the chest cavity decreases in during the 
exhalation. Okay. Next decreases means it comes to the normal position. Next lungs. Lungs expand, volume increases. Lungs contract and volume decreases during the expansion. So this is about the differences between inhalation and exhalation. Normally we inhale oxygen during inhalation. From this we can understand and we exhale carbon dioxide. Isn't it? So the amount of moisture contained in the inhaled air is less when compared to the exhaled air. And the amount of moisture content in exhaled air when you keep the forefinger near, near your nose and exhale the air, you can feel the warmth of the air. The exhaled air is warm and the inhaled air is uh, not so warm. It's, may, it's cool, depends upon the atmosphere. It is cool. Okay. So, exhaled air contains large amount of carbon dioxide and uh, inhaled air is cool and exhaled air is warm and exhaled air. The percentage of the moisture in the exhaled air is more when compared to the inhaled air. So these are the differences that you can write about the inhalation and exhalation and inhaled air and exhaled air. Now we will see about the how much air in your breath is. Now, to find out how much air is there in your breath, we do the simple experiment. See the figure on the board, children. So, this is the, for this we need this equipment, bucket of water, rubber tube, measuring cylinder. So, we can make the measuring cylinder by using the 2 litre water bottle and the injection, 100 ml injection bottle. With that, you take 100 ml of water in the injection bottle and pour water into this water bottle that is of 2 liters water bottle by marking the uh, readings of 100 ml, 200 ml, 300 and so on up to 2 liters. Okay children, so the water is completely filled in the measuring cylinder. So the bottle is made as measuring cylinder and it is inverted into the bucket of water first. And what you do after then, you should take a rubber tube and one end of the rubber tube is inserted into the mouth of the measuring cylinder. Okay, and the other end you should hold in your hand and uh, release the air, blow out the air in a single breath. By blowing out of the air, you should see that uh, you do not inhale the air in. Okay, so blow out the air at a time into the measuring cylinder. So when you blow out the air while doing this, you should see that no air bubbles are formed inside the bottle. And uh, you will see that the air occupies the space inside the bottle and the amount of the some of the water will be moved down. So this result, the amount of the water that moves down is um, uh, can be observed that the, the difference in this, the amount of water that is moved down is the measured in the measuring cylinder by which we can know the water in the bottle and the amount of water after uh, the measurement so that we can find the amount of how much air did you breath out so in your breath it is there you can find out easily this is how you can find out how much air is there in your breath that is the air will be collected in the measuring cylinder as a result the water level in the cylinder will fall down it falls down the water level falls down isn't it so in the the uh, reduction in the water level is equal to the air in your breath so here we can understand that the reduction in the water level of water level is the indication of air in our breath is it clear children so this is about the measurement of air in our breath so now we can understand how much air we able to exhale in a single breath the amount of air uh, is not same for all the pupils that they exhale it is not same it may differ from person to person okay children hope you have understood this answer now write down draw this diagram and write this answer experiment neatly in your notes aim to find out the air in our breath apparatus all these you have to write and experiment or the procedure that you followed you have to write neatly in your notes that's your work for Today. Okay children, hope you have understood the lesson properly and do the work and complete for the next class. We will move to the next topic. Okay, thank you.